would Jesus do the behavior? What counts as Christian? I mean, we're, we're dealing with this right now in, you know, your culture, my, your, Australia, America, right? The, 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 yeah. the class clashes in behavior and you know, the, 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 I obviously as a Southerner, because I know, bless your heart, you're misbehaving that there's the, you know, the, the strong hierarchical class expectation is playing out in very interesting ways here too, because when people are saying, you mm. know, people are misbehaving, I usually hear the class um, categories, which my husband, who's English tells me I can't because I'm in American and we have no class, but the South does. And the race, oh, the do. racial disparities are interestingly yes. overlaid with class class expectations and distinctions. I think I I like yeah. Yay so much because he actually makes sense to me because Chicago blacks speak Southern. They make sense. Yeah. They know how to behave as gent ladies and gentlemen because of the 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 social expectations of politeness that come from the south mm, you have a shared cultural we history. have a shared cultural history we would we would seem very impolite to people in chicago well possibly but we're also good at i mean the chicago we're also good at navigating bless your heart um uh failures of etiquette because you you don't want to you don't want to draw attention to anybody's failure of etiquette because that makes them sad and embarrassed so here the the, the one the yeah. one place and I, I found this like entertaining and delightful the one place where LaSalle actually seemed to be drawing on a Bible story for his teaching in it was of all of the stories right it's like class guess which one it is the visitation <laughs> and if okay this this it that makes no sense to you see you don't visit visiting is a thing I grew up being told you must go visit the the old woman oh, visits yeah, visiting yeah, yeah. no no visits. I understand that we say visits yeah it's yeah. visit it's, no we get visits. It visit well so th thematically we start with the e duchies and how to behave on the internet and stuff like that. what what Lasalle is describing is a court culture right he's, mm. he's describing and that's what, again I'll say it again that why Norbert Elias brought it into his civilizing process is that he saw that the nobility was restraining themselves for the sake of the bureaucracy, right? You're right out, you're spot on with saying this is a bureaucratic yes. Yes. sort of thing. And, and the, you know, the, well, they have to, they have to, because they have to manage other people, right? If they're out of control. They're incapable of doing their job as aristocracy. So it comes with a job. You don't attain a position of nobility unless you act like the nobility we're mm. acting, right? If they're, if you're out of control, you're incapable of governing a country. You have to be the most disciplined of anyone in the country in order to be at that position or else everything falls apart. The king is the first slave of the country. Well, this also, slave. I mean, it fits with what the British are going through in the 19th century when they're trying to rule their empire. That's mm. public school education and stuff up or lip. Yeah, it's, and not, it's not loosey goosey or it, the white, whole ma white man's burden and stuff. It's, it's talking to themselves yeah, about yeah. how you can't lose it when you're in these, yeah. these, these, you know, administrative situations <laughs> yes so i mean but that but that i mean that the, the, then we're ending what up with like the, the norman the normans and the like english this? and the aristocrats and oh. like who is who is christian is it the, just the nobility or is it you know these these horrible kids pooping in your in your drawing room are they christian yeah, lighting things on fire lighting things on fire <laughs> maybe the dessert is like what's new between christian and civil and then mm. and then the problem being of course that Christianity is in fact an urban religion. It, it, it's 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 mm. focused on a city, Jerusalem. <laughs> it spreads through cities, all the cities that Paul preached in, Rome. It is centered administratively in cities, bishops. <laughs> right. Yep. It, it's it's interesting how, you know, the, it's it's not a it's not a peasant's religion. That's why they're pa pagans or peasants um it or rustics right it's it's somehow tied up with being literally civil those nasty villains sorry oh i said those nasty villains those nasty the villains, villains right the, nasty the, pe villains. the pe but then but then you're yeah. also you know obliged to bring christianity to all those nasty villains and preach to them and teach them how to behave and what's you know both the british and and lasalle with his christian brother it's like you're going to get them to behave proper Right. Mm. 
which means no noble. Right. Or aristocratically. Right. Okay, but why? Is that necessary for somebody's salvation? I have to play devil's advocate now. I'm going to read about visiting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So visits. Ignore me. Fine. No, no. I think that's the actual question. Okay. So I'm going to ignore it. Oh, okay. Article one, the duty that decorum imposes on you to make visits, the frame of mind you must have when visiting. If only my mother had shown me this. Okay. But we're Presbyterians, right? My, my great Presbyterian, we're, we're Adam Smithians, right? We worry about feelings and sentiment. But here it is. Okay. Living in the world as you do, you cannot excuse yourself from paying visits from time to time and from receiving them. This is an obligation that decorum imposes on all lay people. You're obliged to visit. <laughs> Even the most blessed virgin, although she lived a very retired life, paid a visit to her cousin Elizabeth. Luke 138. It would seem that the Holy Gospel relates this in some detail, precisely to have this example serve as a model for us. Okay, this is, the, I mean, the problem of reading, it's like Jesus obviously does teach people behavior. Mm. But which, what behavior and where is it? And and so, the, you know, the, 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 the handbooks like this over the centuries, it's like, here's a model in the scriptures. Okay, but it's interesting that this is the main one that LaSalle picks up. Um, Jesus Christ also paid visits several times out of simple charity, for he was certainly not obliged to do so. To understand clearly and to ascertain correctly the occasions when you ought to make a visit, be convinced that Christian decorum must be governed in this manner only by justice and charity, and that it obliges you to make visits only out of necessity to show some token, someone a token of your respect or to cultivate union and charity. This is not like visiting the poor and the sick. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is... In decorum and charity and occasions when decorum founded on justice dictates a visiting would for be for example when a father has a sick child or a child a sick parent um, each is bound to visit the sick person in order to give all the help that christian piety and justice as well as decorum require um, but there's others he, you know goes on about um you must also be careful in visiting not to stay too long which ordinarily is boring or disagreeable to others um, with regard to the people you visit Make sure they are not living dissolute or scandalous lives and that nothing in their conversation suggests impiety or a disregard for religion. Decorum does not allow you to have any dealings with such people. <clears throat> How to enter the house of the person you're visiting. When you go to call on some, remember Holman Hunt's light of, you know, light of the world, Jesus is knocking on the door, right? When you go to call on someone and find the door of the house shut, it would be very impolite to bang on it or knock more than once. Knock gently and then wait patiently until someone comes to open the door. And then just like how to say your name when it was while waiting in a room or in an antechamber, it's contrary to decorum to walk about. This is forbidden in the homes of the nobility. Under no circumstances may you hum or whistle. It's a matter of refinement to remain with your hat off in waiting rooms and antechambers, each when no one else is there. When visiting a person of imminent rank, take care never to wear a hat or to sit down with your back turned towards his portrait or toward that of anyone who has a right to your respect. Hat etiquette. Very important. Yeah. People don't wear hats anymore. Not really. We can do a whole stream on costume. <laughs> yeah. Right. I also, he's not hes not telling them to take their shoes off. I, I just find this interesting that they've taken this, this visiting etiquette from the scriptures, but the people in the middle east they remove their shoes it's not from the scriptures it's from yeah it's just all 18th like, century french it's... court culture right you can greet some but you can greet some in one of three different ways the manner for ordinary situations is to remove your hat first with the right hand and lower it with your arm fully extended this is like stage directions for the three musketeers come on um let the <laughs> let the hat yeah let the hat rest turned outward on your right thigh and leave your left hand free. Second, look gently and politely at the person you are greeting. Third, drop your glance and bow. Fourth, if you wish to move forward, begin by moving the right foot forward. If you wish to withdraw, move the foot back, left foot back. If you are passing someone you wish to greet, first move forward and towards his side. Then, as you pass in front of him, turn slightly toward him and offer a greeting. I'm probably not supposed to be scratching my head. <laughs> It's probably it's probably rude to touch my hair. In fact, it is. <laughs> I was going to say, no wonder they started importing so many drugs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
be high alert just for the direction of your hat in the antechamber. Well, I have here the Magi, and I was like, the, the, the instructions on we're, we have instructions on giving and receiving presents. Let let's let's sort of flow through. Like if we're gonna map these onto the life of Christ, right? We say, okay, so Mary and Mary visits Elizabeth, but like this is not visiting in the sense of Mary goes to visit Elizabeth. It is how to um, do I mean, Jane Austen level sort of social visits, right? You're you're going mm -hmm. around leaving your card, whether you talk, you know, it's like all of that very literally decorous. Um, he also has things on, um, for example, okay, I could, apparently Tiso, whose pictures I'm showing now, didn't do a Magi giving the present, so I don't have that one. But so, for example, when you give a present to someone, it is contrary to decorum to praise it to the skies, as though encouraging the receiver to show a deeper appreciation for it. I've got to do this great thing, right? If others praise the object, you may say that you wish it were even more beautiful, and so in keeping with the merits of the person who received it. It would be very rude to remind someone later of a good deed you did for him, for this would seem to apply something of a reproach. Or you could say that, you know, gift giving is Christian because the Magi bring gifts to Christ and therefore we're going to learn how to give gifts. But this is not at that level. <laughs> or let's see, we have, oh yes, this this was a good one. I have um, uh, how to speak of people and things. Yeah. Uh, is that with the people and things? Jesus and the apostles in Jerusalem, and they're looking around at the sites. I'll get to that in a second. But um, in company, some people speak only of what they like or of things they particularly cherish. If they are fond of a dog, a cat, or a bird, or some other animal, they make these pets the constant subject of their conversation. Don't do that. <laughs> okay, let me... No, no, no. It's... Um, oh, well, I guess it was in the peoples and things. Haha. <laughs> it is prudent when someone is using insulting language for you not to reply in kind and not to undertake to defend yourself. It is better to pretend that you take the whole thing as a joke. And if someone else comes to your defense, you ought to show that you are not upset by what was said. This is very useful on the internet. It is characteristically characteristic of a truly wise person never to be upset by anything. <laughs> a wise person or a dead person. <laughs> Are you dead? <laughs> no, no, no. Then you won't be upset by anything. <laughs> uh, but Decorum prescribes with regard to praise and flattery. It is always uncouth for you to praise yourself and to brag. This is not appropriate because as a Christian, you ought to make yourself known only by your deeds. Only your actions must speak for you. You must never speak of yourself to say either good or evil. Okay, now, if you behave this way, people will definitely think you're polite. But the, the sort of overlapping of whether or not it's about being Christian is interesting mm. because if I, if I go through, I was trying to find pictures that fit with the, the scenarios in here. There's one where he's talking about whether or not you should praise a building or something. And so it's, okay, the, the apostles there. Oh, yes, there's lots of dinner manners. So we have... Um, Are they eating with their how to How to eat soup. Oh, it's extremely improper at table to smell the dishes or to give them to someone else to smell. You are never, I always think people posting online all their food pictures are very rude. You are never permitted if you detect some bad odor in the food to call this to the attention of others. He quotes every so often from Ecclesiasticus, but that's kind of it. What this sounds like to me is a way of reducing the sensuality of your behavior, even though it's highly feelings based. It's a denial of, and I don't mean sexual, when I say sensuality, I mean like the actual sense of the body is being denied, mm. which would make sense if you were trying to discipline yourself for rulership over other people. But it, yeah, that's what it sounds like. Well, it's all it's all very disincarnate. Mm. It's it's the same. We're trying. We have rules about holding our body, about gestures with our body, about touching our body, about moving our body. Um, and all of the, all of the behaviors. So there's, there's more sections of like conversation and laughter, gaming, singing, um, amusements, not permitted, giving you receiving presents, compliments, but it, it, it if you, if you say, it, is it virtuous, right? There's nothing in this necessarily about, in fact, virtue, it's decorum and mm. politeness and civility. So you could have in, in under this kind of, uh, social situation. You can potentially have an incredibly unvirtuous but polite uh, group of people. 